Ever since the 50s, 480 pixel interlaced video at 30 frames per second was the standard in America and 476 pixel interlaced video at 25 frames per second was the standard in Europe and much of the world. Ccam was basically identical to PAL, but weird. But after nearly half a century of standard definition dominance, something had to change. That change was high definition. Modern HD TVs date back to the early 80s, when some Japanese engineers developed a high vision 1125 line standard. And then in the late 90s, some experimentation was done, but alas, us average consumers would need to wait until the early and mid 2000s to see both widescreen and HD become mainstream. There were two HD standards back then 720p and 1080i. Funnily enough, the P in 720p, and in other names, stands for Progressive, not Pixel, as 1080i stands for 1080 interlaced. Basically, while a 720p video was just a 1280 by 720 screen displayed at a maximum of 60 times per second, 1080i was a standard where a 1920 by 1080 screen was cut up into two 1920 by 540 images, with the first image having the odd horizontal lines, you know, like numbers 1, 3, 5, 735, that sort of stuff, and the other one would have the even lines, like 2, 4, 6, 500, 1080, that sort of stuff. These images would be displayed 60 times per second, first one then the other, which would give us a frame rate of 30 frames per second or 60 fields per second. 1280 by 720 or 720p resulted in a total of 921,000 pixels, while 1280 by 540 or 1080i resulted in 1,036,000 pixels. In a way, you'd get a better quality on the HD CLT TVs of the time, but nowadays, interlaced video is a thing of the past. So, 720p was used since the mid-2000s by most people, with YouTube adopting the standard in late 2008. So how come 720p at 30 frames per second is still the most popular standard to upload on YouTube? And it's not just YouTube, other websites as well have 720p as the standard. Well, let's first look at the upsides of 720p. It's around twice as fast to encode as 1080p. 1080p has around 2,073,000 pixels. 720p has 921,000 pixels. Because your video encoder has to encode a little over twice as many pixels, recording 1080p takes up a little over twice the time 720p takes. Bandwidth is also important. Video bandwidth is measured in kilobits per second. One bit is 8 bytes, so 8,000 kilobits per second is 1,000 kilobytes per second. To understand why bandwidth is important and the role it plays, we need to look at uncompressed versus compressed bandwidth. YouTube recommends our 720p 30 bitrate be between 3 and 8 megabits per second. That's around 400 kilobytes to 1 megabyte per second of data. The uncompressed bitrate for a 720p video at 30 frames per second is 663 megabits per second, which is 82 megabytes per second. How come? Well, video encoders do a lot of things to improve bandwidth, like chroma subsampling, and a ton of different types of compression that we're not really here to talk about. What we are here to talk about is basically the more pixels there are, the less noticeable the small errors can be. What this means is that while bitrate and resolution does scale linearly, our perception of artifacts in the compression gets stronger the lower the resolution is, because they're easier to spot because there's less pixels. Here's a 1080p video recorded at a constant quality factor of 28. Here's a 480p video that's also recorded in a constant quality factor of 28. Constant quality means that bitrate be damned, the physical quality of the video will try to stay the same, so if there's no action, the bitrate is low, if there's a ton of stuff moving, the bitrate is high. See how 480p looks much worse? The way we perceive this difference in compression matters a lot, and it's why 480p is never really used on sites like YouTube. The compression YouTube does on it does not help it in the slightest. In a way, 720p is just in the right spot. It's low resolution enough that it's common and fast, almost all modern devices can record in HD, whether we're talking about camera quality or screen recording quality, while 1080p at 60 frames per second is what most people, including myself, strive for, 
it sometimes just isn't worth it for people. Like those whose machines just aren't powerful enough to render, or they make projects which don't need 1080p. For instance, any older game that I play that runs at 720p or below, I didn't bother rendering at 1080p. There's going to be zero quality difference between a Wii game being rendered at 720p and in 1080p in my video editor considering the Wii itself runs in 480p. I get a video out twice as fast and the quality loss is basically zero. And speaking of the quality, comparing 720p and 1080p on YouTube, you can sometimes barely tell the difference unless you know exactly what to look for. 720p with anti-aliasing, or when it's downscaled from 1080p with proper sampling, can fool a lot of people into thinking it's 1080p, and sometimes the only way you can tell the difference is by comparing the 720p and 1080p versions directly. You could see two recordings, one of them is in 720p, the other one is in 1080p, and you can't tell the difference. But of course if we put the 720p and 1080p recording of the same scene, then you can tell. Well, yes. The 1080p version is cleaner. Oftentimes, 720p speed means users with lower end machines can record better quality videos in 720p than in 1080p. What do I mean? Well, let's look at the following settings on OBS's X264 encoder. You'll want to use faster, or maybe fast, or medium, depending on your PC. Only go above faster if you must as that will start degrading image quality, because it turns off some features faster and below used to make it run faster. At faster or below, you will just decrease the file size the slower the preset is. But of course the slower the preset is, the more encoding time it takes. I don't suggest going below medium for almost anything. Ultra fast can be up to three times faster than, well, faster in some of my testing. In these two comparison shots, I've used 1080p faster and 1080p ultra fast. And ultra fast did not only use a lot more bandwidth, but it also looks a lot worse when paused, although it looks alright in motion. Recording in 720p faster is actually 30% slower than 1080p ultra fast and is actually more comparable to 1080p super fast. Although this also depends on what you're actually recording. If you're just interested in recording, you can get a decent quality 720p recording that isn't that well compressed off of a Core 2 Duo PC, running simpler games like old Minecraft, GTA San Andreas and such. But in all honesty, in the year 2023, just get a quad core if you're looking for a PC. I have an older video on some fun stuff I was doing, TLDR, you get into OBS, enable FMPEG output, use MPEG-1 with like 12,000 kilobits, and set both canvas and output resolution to 720p at 30fps, then just set your game to be captured via game capture as it's faster, and then you separate the game and my codeo into two separate tracks, don't forget to enable that in the encoder settings, and boom, you're done. Although, I have to say, I have managed to get 30% CPU usage on 1080p60 X264 Ultra Fast on an i5-4670, so if you want to just record in 1080p on that, you probably can. But what about 60fps? 2K? 4K? Well, a 60fps is nice, definitely, but it not being there is completely fine to me and to most others. It's just extra eye candy to us, as we're just watching it and not the ones playing, so it doesn't really matter in almost all cases. The eye candy is very nice though. 1440p and 4K are resolutions most people don't bother watching YouTube in. It's a lot of extra bandwidth that some people just don't have. Maybe they don't have a 4K screen, or maybe they just don't have the processing power to watch it. More importantly, 4K is 4 times 1080p, hence the 4. It takes four times longer to record, render, and edit, and since most people won't watch it in 4K, why bother? 1080p may still be the gold standard, but realistically, 720p is fast enough for most people in the world, not just in first world countries, but in the entire world. The quality is good enough that it's acceptable to all but the, honestly, most nitpicky. I mean, 1080p is preferable, but I'll settle for 720p.